Over the past couple weeks, I haven't been too active on my YouTube channel due to being sick and then playing catch up. Uh, but I did end up receiving a lot of private messages about people wanting just to see some of my projects that I make for myself outside of YouTube. So I decided to uh, start that off by showing some windows that I've made. I've got these two larger windows and then four of these smaller porthole sized windows where I'm making the wood frames and the stained glass. Um, I don't have any previous experience with stained glass so it was a learning experience and uh, overall it went really good and I think I found a new thing that I really like doing in making stained glass. Um, most all the materials except for the hinges, some of the wood and the screws that I used to assemble this were all scrap or either secondhand materials that I'm finding in uh, junk stores, little antique shops, buying the stained glass from uh, stained glass artists, like smaller pieces of scrap for, for pennies on the dollar compared to how much the stuff costs if you buy sheets of it from stained glass supply companies. Um, same with the solder, I was buying like partial rolls just here and there as I find it solid core. 50-50 um, uh, solder is what I've been finding the most of. And uh, whereas a roll of that solder can be pretty expensive and I'm finding rolls of it for 50 cents and stuff. And some of them even still have the shrink wrap and the uh, old price tag on them. But, um, but I'm going to go through this video in segments because if I try to do it all at once, I'll probably end up getting kind of lost and repeating myself. So the first thing I'm going to go over is the construction on uh, the larger windows. The construction is pretty basic on these windows. The outside frame is made of 2x4s. What I did is I just made sure that the 2x4s that I picked either from scrap or some that I purchased were as straight as possible. and. Uh, had a green orientation in it that looked like they would be stable in the long run. Um, and that's not being too picky, it's just uh, just try your best and you don't worry about it too much. Uh, a window like this that's hinging has gaps around, it, gaps around it, allowing for enough tolerance to where if things shift a little bit, it, it doesn't so much matter. Plus, the way that you will end up uh, making sure the windows stay closed will probably pull things into shape while they're shut, making for a good seal. Um, back to the construction, uh, like I said, the outside frame is 2x4s and then I filled in. What I did first is I decided this inside measurement and then with this laid out, um, I did most of the layout on a big piece of paper, taking a big compass and swinging the, uh, I mean a pair of dividers and swinging an arch out and figuring out this curve and I cut that out, used that as a template to then make these filler pieces that make for a solid uh, wood arch. Um, once I got that actual arch made, out, made, I traced that inside out onto another sheet of paper and designed up the actual doors. Uh, the doors, once again, this is all made out of uh, two by four or two by material in general. Some of it was two by six, ripped up. But um, just spruce lumber, just, this is just Lowe's construction grade lumber just trying to pick the best pieces out, the most knot free wood and the straightest grain that I could find. And these windows have been sort of a, a work in progress over the past uh, couple of months really. I just sort of, this is a project, this isn't something I'm pushing to try to get done by any deadline, the little house that I'm building that these are going to go in. So I'm just sort of work on it at my leisure just for basically enjoyment. And um, but. Uh, so all the, con the construction on these is based on, um, they're just butt joints, but then it's splined together and ripping the grooves for the splines on a table saw and then also making the splines on the table saw to fit snugly. Um, as far as, the only tricky aspect would be cutting splines in some of these curved pieces, but making a simple jig out of some plywood and something to back those curves, you can slide that right along a fence. Slide it as a whole unit instead of trying to hold that curve piece, which uh, can be pretty dangerous and not such a good idea. But uh, so let me go ahead and take you in for a closer look at some of the construction. So this is down on one of the lower corners and this lower piece goes all the way across and this top piece comes down and sits right down on top of it. Then on the inside, there is a spline that runs between the two. And then this whole joint, you know, even though it's not the best glue joint, there's still glue attached 
right in here and then up through that spline and um, the grain of the spline is running this direction just so you know and uh, it makes for a really strong joint plus this is a fairly lightweight door supported by um, pretty good sized hinges so it'll you know probably be pretty good um, as far as the hinges go these are just Lowe's um, solid brass hinges and these are actually pretty solid little hinges for their cost and uh, so I've been pretty happy with the way these have um, turned out. I think they look good and this will um, make sure I don't end up with any rust, uh, which is a good thing. Um, up top, this is the curved part of the window. Same construction with the splines, same hinges. And as far as the hinges and mortising these go, I made a, just a basic little um, template, little jig for routing those out with a laminate trim router or a palm router, whatever you want to call it. When it comes to how the windows shut, the bottoms of the windows have a slight angle on them and the uh, lower part of the frame has an angle cut on it too to match. So the window ends up shutting right up against that angle. And this is just so when water runs down the outside of that window, it can't run back, uh, back underneath that window and out. The sides are going to have some sort of weather seal to prevent the same thing but for the bottom I just want to make sure that there was no standing water on this bottom part. This creates a kind of an interesting joint right in here. I guess one could make this outside part go all the way down in this part butt up right against it but uh, for some reason I just didn't really want to do that so what I ended up doing was angling uh, just cutting the, the profile into the side of this upper 2x4 to match that bottom piece. And uh, how I did it was on the table saw. First, I uh, just using, used a crosscut sled or either the miter gauge, can't remember, but um, first I just made the vertical cut and then I made the angled cut, or either I made the angled cut then the cut up to that point. Either way, it doesn't really matter, but it was just done on a table saw. Um, at first. Then for the second window, I wised up and I just used my bandsaw. It was much faster. It was no setup. All I did is just traced it on there and it ends up getting glued and screwed so uh, you, you really don't need it to be that precise. In the end it's all painted up and it's strong. It's framed into the wall anyway so it's plenty strong. The outside of the windows are just a little bit different than the front side and is the, uh, the windows sit flush with the outside. This is to where they'll be able to hinge out this way. Also on the outside of one of the windows is this strip here which closes over top the second one. So the mechanism on the inside that I had not yet made will hold the, this window shut which will pull them both shut. And this is a good time to see the design. This one has sort of some, well, you can see the colors, just some blues and oranges and yellows. And uh, the whole color scheme is sort of supposed to be a sun and a moon because they're going to be on either side of um, either side of the little house that I'm making. So uh, I thought that would be pretty neat, but it didn't want it to be like so blatantly sun and moon that it was corny so I mean I think it's just overall it's just sort of a, a nice design and nice colors that'll um, kind of complement each other on either side of the house and what I was sort of looking at was a combination of um, kind of a arts and crafts slash uh, Art Nouveau type design books and uh, which I'm really a fan of some of the there's always sort of a bold visual feature and then all the pattern and uh, some of it's floral but a lot of it just comes down to it's just that the pattern that surrounds a central figure of some sort and I really like that thinking of these as the central figure and focus then complemented by some sort of repetitive design. So next up is sort of talk about the stained glass just a little bit and uh, the, the stained glass for these, I mean, most of it's pretty self-explanatory because you're not blind. You can see the colors, and, uh, but what I did is these lower sections, each one of these are individual pieces of glass. All I really did was took a full sheet and then just scored those lines and reassembled the solid pieces. 
just to get these solder lines in. Um, the, the lower part, this is just normal sheet glass that came out of storm windows. And then the upper part is the stained glass that I got from stained glass artists at Scrap. And um, which, I mean, it, it really is some nice stuff to work with. And once again, I, I don't really have any previous experience with this other than just seeing some people do stuff and then looking it up on, in um, books and on the internet. But uh, so pretty much I just went at it and I did this with copper foil. Um, so all the top and the bottom is all copper foiled, which I think technically is not the total correct way to do this. I should have been using something called lead came, which is sort of a sort of looks like channel iron made out of lead that you can shape to all the curves, which allows for expansion and contraction of the glass due to, I guess, uneven heat on the inside and outside. But I'm going to sort of just see how this goes as a sample. And if I end up having to remake it, so be it. But uh, for now, um, I'm just going with this design. Um, and I'll just show this one just a little bit. The upper part, it's kind of mono colored, whatever you want to call it. Um, just sort of the same, different tones of the same color and uh, with that clear architectural glass surrounding the inner design. Then the bottom part was a grid pattern and all those are individual pieces of glass and those were all cut by cutting strips of glass first and then just cutting off all the little squares and then copper foiling the edges. And I won't get too much into explaining how I did the stained glass because you can look all that up on other YouTube videos of people explaining it much better than I can. Um, as for the color, the, this is a solid stain. Uh, I think it is a, I can't think of the brand. It got the two brands at Lowe's. It's not Cabot, it's the other one. It's a couple dollars less and it, from my experience, previous experience, it works, works just fine. This color is called Gibraltar Gray, which I really liked. And this is what color I've painted um, some of the other stuff on the house so far. The other four windows in this project that are going to be stained glass are these porthole sized windows and to give you an idea of scale that is the stained glass is eight inches in diameter. So uh, this is one, okay, you can see the difference between the two. This is a freshly soldered one with the bright solder and then this is one that has had sort of an antiquing done to it with a patina that turns the lead solder black. Um, to show you what these look like, there you go. And uh, where these are going in the house are going to be up in a, the sides of a dormer. So, you know, the normal roof is here where the dormers pop out like this. It's going in the sides of the dormer. So there's a dormer on each side of the roof. So one of these are going in each one of those little triangular shaped walls that end up getting formed from the dormers I'm making. And this inner circle is about a three inch piece of clear glass to where I can still have some visibility out of, the, out of these windows because a lot of the colored glass is textured and it really skews your vision. So as you can see through that middle part, you know, once your face is close, you can see right much. The construction of these is fairly simple and could be simplified even further. The, the glass is just, you know, just like that and it just pops in to a little rabbit that's routed around the um, outside of that and I think that's about a 3 8 inch rabbit that is um, almost a half inch deep. These are constructed by, out of four pieces, you can, I think you can pretty much see that and then there are splines connecting them. It's a little tricky to get it all worked out, but uh, it was mainly just using a band saw, a uh, table saw, and a router, and then cleaning it all up afterwards on a disc sander and a spindle sander. Um, cleaned it up on the outside with a disc sander, and then cleaned the inside of the circle out with a spindle sander with a pretty big drum in there. Um, I think you could make these up out of plywood and then layer them up. And then once it's all sanded smooth, uh, puttied if you want, and painted, I think it wouldn't probably really make much of a difference that it was either, you know, solid wood or plywood. 
the solid wood, I mean the plywood may even be more stable in the long run, but once these are framed into the walls, they're not going to move but so much. The construction of these is fairly simple and could be simplified even further. The, the glass is just, you know, just like that and it just pops in to a little rabbit that's routed around the um, outside of that and I think that's about a 3 8 inch rabbit that is um, almost a half inch deep. These are constructed by, out of four pieces, you can, I think you can pretty much see that and then there are splines connecting them. It's a little tricky to get it all worked out, but uh, it was mainly just using a band saw, a uh, table saw, and a router, and then cleaning it all up afterwards on a disc sander and a spindle sander. Um, cleaned it up on the outside with a disc sander, and then cleaned the inside of the circle out with a spindle sander with a pretty big drum in there. Um, I think you could make these up out of plywood and then layer them up. And then once it's all sanded smooth, uh, puttied if you want, and painted, I think it wouldn't probably really make much of a difference that it was either, you know, solid wood or plywood. The solid wood, I mean the plywood may even be more stable in the long run, but once these are framed into the walls, they're not going to move but so much. Here's the window all mounted up in the gable end of the roof and uh, it can be easily opened up from the loft above the porch to allow for a cross ventilation between this window and the one on the opposite end of the house. But I'm going to bring you on into the inside to where you can sort of see the stained glass uh, with the light from the exterior uh, from the inside of the house. So come on in. So here we are on the inside of the house up in the upper loft area. Um, I wanted to sit up here while I did the video to show you sort of the scale of the space that the window's in. It's a smaller window, but the space is small, so I think proportionally they fit nicely together. Height-wise, from, uh, from the loft up to the peak is about three feet, and it's also about three feet deep. Um, the inside of the, this part of the house is only seven and a half feet wide up in this little uh, loft above the porch. Um, but uh, I really like the way the window looks up in the peak, and um, and again, it you know it offers real good ventilation, which is good for these smaller spaces where humidity can be a little hard to control because that air has so much uh, well, there's just so much less airspace for the humidity to occupy, so it can get a little higher. Um, uh, but um, other than that, I mean, it allows a, a kind of a pretty nice warm light to enter the house. But with the clear glass down below, it still allows plenty of light to flood in to where the space itself isn't too dark. And then down below, there's plenty of windows. But um, So there's this window, and then the other one goes straight across to the other side. Well, that wraps up this video of showing you my stained glass window projects. And I uh, hope you liked it. Um, the request to see some of my projects, I didn't know, you know what, um, how the general interest in that would go. So let me know what you think in the comments below, or send me a private message if you'd like to know a little bit more about how I did or how I made a certain aspect of these windows. I thought it'd be a pretty good idea to post this type of video because it might spark up a conversation or interest in how I did part of these and um, may end up doing some stained glass uh, videos or how to do maybe a, the, the spline joint in this type of a project. But um, if you like this type of video, subscribe to my channel and check out some of my other ones. I've got another video on how to glaze windows with DAP latex window glazing, and I'll put a link in the description for that. And uh, because I use that same glazing on putting these panels in there, even though it says not to do it on the back of the can, I see no real reason why you shouldn't be able to do it. They're held in with glazing points anyway, so... Um, uh, we'll see how it goes. Maybe I'll report back on that if there's ever a problem. But uh, in the meantime, subscribe to my channel to see uh, to get updates when I post future uploads. And other than that, thanks for watching.